Good morning, brothers and sisters of Christ. It is, I don't think it's super early, but it's definitely early. Some of you guys are definitely still asleep. I am up and I wanted to do um, a reflection. So I know I did a video before. So I did my video before and I'm, you know, I'm telling you guys about my storm and everything. But today I want to do a reflection. Today is actually the day I got married. It is so crazy because when I said I was going to do these videos, I was, <clears throat> I guess it's almost like vlogging a little bit. But when I said I, I was going to do these videos, I was going to be very honest, very candid. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, I want, my goal for these videos is for people to understand the walk. You know, some people think, you know, walking with Christ is the easiest thing. Um, it is absolutely not. And if you're having a cakewalk, uh, chances are you ain't really walking. I, I just don't believe you. I, I really don't because it's not, it's not uh, a cakewalk, whatever. But today I want to reflect. Uh, like I said in my other video, um, which I gave some details. Um, whoop, there you go. Um, today is the day that I got married literally y'all so it's been about how many years at this point it has been almost three years and i'm not gonna lie this day literally almost feels feels like because it's not because we don't claim those things like it hunts you like seriously like um and it's just and we know it's the devil the devil just evil god be like oh it's done the devil be like Michael Jackson on you. He'd be like, do you remember? I'd be like, no, I don't. Please, let's like, let that go. But like on this day, um, I'm just going to tell you like, I woke up. There's no need for you to wake up and be like, <gasps> but I literally woke up and I was just like, okay, I'm going to work. Take my little sweetie pee out for breakfast because that's what I do on certain days. And yeah, I was like, that's it. But literally you guys i'm gonna tell you exactly the stuff i remember so okay got married on valentine's day yeah not a good idea but yeah uh, well the whole marriage is not a good idea but um got married and i am going to take you to what i remember and this is just a reflection this is not you know you watch that first part i'll put more parts but this is just reflection got married uh i remember that day i remember Waking up by myself, but you're married. Uh, well, no, you're not married. I remember waking up. Uh, the person I was with wasn't there. And I remember being like, this is it. Like, I'm leaving this dude. Like, he is the worst person ever. And then um, I remember hearing the keys to my, my home because he was staying in my home. And uh, I remember the keys turning in my apartment. And then I remember him walking in like it was nothing, y'all. I, I, I promise you I'm not lying. And then, like, going to my bedroom, jumping on the bed, like everything was all cool. At that point, I remember I was, like, I think I was, like, doing my hair or something. Because, again, remember, I was going to go to a shoot or whatever. And then... I remember the mistake. I think the worst thing about a mistake is like when you just be like, eh, ooh, shouldn't have did it. I remember, uh, I remember going down to that courthouse and it was almost as if it was just too easy. It was almost like as if he was taking out the trash, y'all. But I wasn't, I couldn't see it. Uh, so I remember we go inside the courthouse and you got to fill out this paperwork. And I remember distinctly, I wanted to hyphenate my name. And he was like, no, you can't hyphenate your name. You know, you're going to do it, you're going to do it completely. And I remember being like, oh, that sucks. I kind of want to hyphenate my name, you know, because my name kind of flowed with the whole thing. Karima, you know, whatever it flowed with the rest. And I was like, all right, we're not hyphenating, we're not hyphenating the name. I remember, and this is just me like recapping that day. So this is not the story. Uh, 
you'll have to watch the previous video to get to this whatever but i remember like um hyphenate not uh, uh him not wanting me to hyphenate the name and then i remember uh whatever i remember and this is for DeKalb county y'all this when you know you made a mistake right so what they do is you sign all your paperwork right so you're done with your paperwork and then they send you on your mosey way so you have two hours y'all let me tell you guys grace when you just don't even be like oh grace it takes two hours um after whatever to um i think for the um for the what do you call it for i guess the pastor to marry you guys so we literally had two hours to say heck no in those two hours i literally i remember driving on 285 i said i need to do an errand but really what i was doing was i was trying to think and i remember i remember because i i couldn't really think i want to make a decision and like i couldn't i remember i wasn't calling anybody or who, some of the people I was calling, it was like, you know, that's what you want to do. Go ahead and do. Let me tell you something about advice. If I'm calling you, do not give me what I want to hear. If you think this person is horrible for any friend or anybody out there, if you think it's horrible, don't they be that person like, well, I don't want to rain on that parade. No, you need to be the voice. Because if you call me, I'm like, look, this, this don't sound good. Okay, just don't do it. And I think my friends know that. I think my friends and my family know I'll be like, don't do it. This is not a good idea. But I remember calling a couple people and they was like, you know, this is what you want to do, blah, 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 congratulations. And I was like, is it what I want to do? I couldn't decide if it was what I wanted to do or what seemed like it made sense. Because at the time, you know, you have to be honest, this person is living with you and that's shacking. So you're, you're a Christian. And you're trying to be in line with God. And so you're trying to figure out, you know, like, I don't want to shack. You know, I wasn't burning with lust, but definitely he was. Like, I was, I was good. I it did i mean for whatever reason it just did not bother me at all like you know some people struggle with the that lust part but with him i i didn't but he definitely was burning and so i took a scripture and i think a lot of people do this i took a scripture and um the, the scripture in the bible is um basically you know it's better to basically wed than burn with lust and for me i felt as if this is the right thing I should do because this person is burning with lust. That was wrong. So um, I remember um, going back and then I remember um, driving back and then the time was dwindling. I was like, okay, we're not about to do this. Like, okay, this is a joke, right? <laughs> like, we're just arguing because I can't, it came off the, um, ooh, I don't even think I told y'all this my the person i was with um when he came home it was off the cuffs of uh i had i guess i said if i'm gonna tell him i'm gonna tell it all so it came off the cuffs of the person i was dating at the time i had the there were two girls who were messaging me back and forth telling me that my then boyfriend now husband was down in a state paying for uh six yeah it's all messed up y'all i'm not i'm not like this is serious yeah so like it came off the cusp of that so it's almost like girl what are you thinking like you just had the situation happen they said this is what you're the person that you're with is doing how in the world are you going to marry this person but yes i still did it you guys i'm not lying i do believe there's a spirit of stupid a steer of ignorance and we could all laugh about it but i'm being dead serious because it's no way possible in your right mind you would do that that that's dumb you just don't do that you know what i'm saying like all the signs are there and you just like i'm gonna do it anyway because i'm in love no like no so i remember we were sitting at the and i don't know if it was like a joke to me or it was just like this is it was more or less for me because I have friends who asked me about it because I didn't even tell my friends, y'all. That's like I didn't tell some of my friends. And I remember sitting there um, when they, you know, pronounce you man and wife or whatever. And we were sitting there and I remember um, like he gonna fold. <laughs> like I was like, 
he gonna fold. He's not gonna do this. Like, he don't want to be married for real. He really want to be out there in them streets. Let him be in them streets. And I remember thinking, like, he's going to fold. But this dude did not fold, y'all. I'm dead serious. Like, he was sitting there. There was nothing sweet about the marriage. There was nothing romantic about the marriage. That was nothing of love. I think it was more of who's going to fold. Almost like a competition. You know? I'm um, coming from, um, you know, I think coming from an athletic background and coming from, uh, you know, whatever backgrounds we have, I think it was more like who's going to fold, who's going to win versus this is wrong and somebody should stop. So I remember like, um, I was like, okay, nobody folded. And so like, I remember the people ahead of us, I remember looking cause they had like their daughters, whatever. I was like, oh, so sweet. And then like, I'm watching it. I'm like, this is so sweet. And then when they call our names, I'm like, Oh, this is about to happen for real. So, we end up going down, whatever. Uh, do the I do's. And then, after saying the I do's, I remember we're getting ready to leave. It's not like he's happy. It's just like, mm, I'm just like, I did it. And then, right when we walked out of the courthouse, I remember him saying, We should have got a prenup. That's one. I ain't even got to see half y'all faces. I know y'all like, dang, prenup. That was the first thing. Uh, the second thing, um, it was just the worst decision ever, y'all. Uh, so that was the first thing. The second thing, after we got in the prenup, like I said, you know, in my previous video, we got he was burning with lust. We got in the car, and I remember he looked at me. And y'all, trust me, I cried a thousand times, so I'm, I'm going to try my best not to do it. And I have a little bit of cold. He looked at me and was like, can uh, N-I-G-G-A get his D-I-C-K sucked? That was it. That was the second thing. Oh, now. That's what he said. That was a complete, <laughs> that was a complete sentence. And like, and like I said in my previous video, it is the most degrading thing for anybody to say that they love you and do that it's degrading um after and, and and while we're driving right so this is while we're driving so then after we finish while we're driving um we get back to my apartment <laughs> that i am paying for <laughs> and no, then we stopped because we he, he had a friend who just purchased a home with um, their girlfriend. And um, I was just thinking like, wow, I remember I was Christian. I was like, wow, you know, the two of them are making bigger strides um, than we are. Uh, for commitment wise even though I, I still was like oh that's kind of bad idea because now y'all about to shack you ain't even gave you a ring but then I was like what in my mind I said what do you know I mean you just got married and this is not looking like beautiful I remember I was going home he was like um he was like oh let's get something we're gonna go to that house and celebrate and I remember I was like okay we we're gonna celebrate their home but not our marriage but I wish I could tell y'all I was so boisterous at that time, but I really wasn't. I think, I don't know if I was in shock that I just made the biggest mistake in my life. I don't know what it was, but um, yeah, it was, that's what it was. So it really pretty much like sucked. And then everything else was kind of like a blur. Uh, like everything was I remember we went over there we did this and it was just like a blur we did not consummate the marriage at all at that point so it was that was February 14th of 2020 it was um again like for that person this is just the story of what happened. I don't hate you. Um, you are who you are. Um, it is what it is. And my hopes is that I can help someone who will hear this story and realize that, wow, you know, I need to really think some of these things out. Um, we hear 
pastors when we go into marriages and say marriages, uh, marriage should not be taken lightly. And I would definitely say I am a testimony of that, that it should not be taken lightly. It's not something that you could quickly undo like that. Uh, I will say right now, for me, on that day, it is always a day where I'm just like, I'm not like you're looking behind your back, but it's just a day of like, this was the day I made the biggest mistake of my life. And I, I don't want anybody to ever think that way. Like, to ever be like, this day, because it's a holiday, of course, you remember, is the day I made the biggest mistake of my life. So, what I want, um, I, what I want is for it not to be that day. But I want to tell you, brothers and sisters in Christ, it starts with you. So, for example, today's the day. It's just a day. It's a day that, um, it's an anniversary day of something that you made a mistake, but it's something that you can actually make better. It doesn't have to be something that has a stronghold over you where this day comes and you're just upset and you don't know what you're going to do and oh boo hoo hoo. It doesn't have to be. It could be amazing. The change that God ha has allowed me to have viewing simple things, because trust me, y'all, it is like the worst. Like, I have to see this person today. Like, not that I like the person or anything, but you have to see this person. It's like, dang, I made that mistake with you. And you're not really nice at all to me at all. You're like really a big time jerk. Like, but that's something else. But um, this day does not, a day, I want to tell it right, a day does not have to define you. Now, I'm telling you about this story because I want you to know my whole testimony. Because you're going to hear so many crazy things that I just literally have to give it to you 100%. I, I have to. Because then I'm not being honest and I'm not giving you my true testimony. And I need you to be able to feel and see everything that has happened and occurred. I don't care what time it is in the morning time. It's, clearly, y'all see, I'm just giving it to you now. But I want you guys to be able to understand uh, the ramifications of decisions that you make and what can happen when you move ahead of Christ. When God tells you no and you do it anyway. Like I said, it's been three years, you know. Um, clearly I'm still going through it. Like it's a crazy journey, which you guys hear later, but like, um, I want you guys to understand the ramification of, of things and to take heed to God's word and don't marry the Canaanite, the Canaanite. Don't do it. Or don't, you know, listen. And I'm not calling person a Canaanite. I'm just saying in general, I'm just saying like, you know, Take heed to what God tells you. Um, love yourself. Recognize the signs. And really just stay focused on God. And when God tells you something, when God tells you no, that's why I should title it. When God tells you no, he means no, don't do it. But I definitely want to come on here quick. It's like 18 minutes and 20 something seconds. I want to come on here quick and just wanted to reminisce on that day to tell you what happened on that day now i know some of you guys are thinking i bet she hate this day i told you i'm gonna keep it 100 with you <laughs> on all bases do i hate valentine's day yeah i ain't gonna lie i was like god dang i hate this day because it is a day that makes me it, it makes me remember hopefully i don't cry the day i literally didn't listen to my father in heaven. So it has nothing to do with the person. It has something to do with the mistake. And that's, I want you to know that that is of the devil. Because God says when you ask him for forgiveness, he forgives you. So he's not like, mm, girl, remember that thing you did? That's the devil that keeps doing it. So that is something that I personally have to uh, work with every day. But do I hate this day? It's not my favorite just because I felt like I felt my father in heaven because I didn't I didn't listen and because I did not listen all this uh, snowball of things I had have occurred to me that could have been avoided if I just would have listened and so it's almost like somebody telling you like hey you need to go right because on the left it's gonna be a crash 
and you be like, ain't no crash, I ain't hear nothing on the news. And then you go in an accident and then something happened like maybe uh, somebody that you in the car got hurt or paralyzed. And it's something that you just can't take back because now it has changed the trajectory of whatever situation. That's what this day symbolizes for me, that this changed the trajectory of wherever God was pushing me. But the wonderful thing about God is even if you made a left, he's going to be like, all right, so we about to make this big old U-turn because you got to get, you have to get to the place I was taking you. But still, as a, a human, a person, it still sucks because it's like, dang, I, uh, dang, like Jesus, I, 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 I messed up. I shouldn't have did it. So it's always a day and I have to stop doing it day. I'm always like, Jesus, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. And that's just something that I deal with. So. I did want to tell you guys that I know it was a little explicit because I spelled out words for you. And I know there's going to be people of different colors watching this. And I know some of you guys are going to shake and jump and be like, holy crap, did she just spell that? Did she just? Yes. I want you to know exactly how I was. Very blunt. Um, it's, it's just very blunt. But if I'm trying to tell you, if that right there made you jump, that you do not need to watch the rest of the story. It's 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 uh it's very offensive. <laughs> it's very offensive, but um again, it is what it is. So I want to finish this up with prayer. It is early in the morning. I am trying to see what else I'm gonna do. I have to do my morning devotions. Of course, I gotta work and get my rhyme right and pray. And I'm going to pray for the other person because I they, they need prayer, for real, for real. And it's not like, oh, I'm going to pray for you. You know how people say that because they're mad at you. I'm going to pray for this person. No, the person needs prayer for real, like, for real, like, seriously. So, I'm just going to go ahead and go out in prayer. Um, please put any comments. If you need an explanation, if you need more details or whatever it is, I'm not offended by any means necessary. I want you to understand. So, um, first, I just want to say, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this moment where I am just being so transparent and blunt about what occurred. Lord, I just want to thank you. On this day, I just remember so much, Father, so much things that occurred and voices I heard and knowing that you were trying to stop me father but I did not listen I mourn the decision that I made Lord because I have decisions made against you father I know I constantly apologize for it but you tell me that you always tell me that I'm always forgiven father father I thank you for not leaving me or forsaking me father for keeping me and holding me as I went through the situations that I went through father you are magnificent you are you are Alpha, you are Omega, Father. You are omnipresent, Father. Omnipotent, Father. Because you never left me that whole time, Father. Father, even when I wake up this morning, I go, wow, Father. Where would I have been if I didn't make the decision, Father? That you don't howl me down and say, daughter, if you was here, you would have been here. But Father, you took everything that I had, Father, and you turned it around for good. That people don't even know I'm the manifestation of a blessing, a testimony. And what you will do, even in your time of worry, Father, even in my times of not knowing what was going to happen, Father. You were so good to me that I don't think even people understand the tears that I cry, tears of joy that the Lord continues to save. That you didn't just do it on the cross. You continue to save people from decisions from themselves, Father, that you save people from things every single day, Father. And I thank you for it, Jesus. Father, I ask you that you send your angels of peace to people, even right now that's watching, Father, that if they need peace, Father, that you give them peace. For your Prince of Peace, Father, so I ask you for it, Father, that you just send your angels to defend them, Father, because the angels of uh, up, because your angels defend those who fear the Lord and deliver them, Father. Father, I pray that you hold people extra tight, that they don't believe that a day uh, uh, signifies who they are in you, 
and that a day does not tell them who they're loved by because when you have the love of Christ you have the love of the biggest most important person that you could have ever had father I pray you comfort those who have lost people father during this time and they're sad father Father, I pray that you feed those who need to be fed, Father. And you hold those who need to be held, Father. And you push those who need to be pushed to push through, to get through the things that they need to get through, Father. Father, I ask that you order our steps in the name of Jesus, Father, for what we're going to go through. Because you guide the path of the godly, Father. And you're so amazing when you do it, Father. Because I've seen you do magnificent things for me, Father. I pray that you allow me to push forward. To love those who despitefully use me, Father. I ask you that you allow the, even the listeners right now to push forward in things where people are not kind to them, Father. I pray forgiveness will be in their hearts, Father. And they too have an amazing testimony of whatever they're going through, Father. And you put it in them to be able to share to other people, Father. Father, I pray that you heal me of my uh, runny nose and uh, constantly the weather changed, Father. I bind this story, Father, with the blood of Jesus, Father. I ask that you always listen to me, that you forgive the one who had did me wrong, the one that has continued to lie, Father, the person who continued to do things of manner evil, Father. I pray that you have grace and mercy upon him, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. I pray that even today be a great uh, day for us, Father, and we're able to push forward. I pray that he has a better understanding of what I am doing for the body of Christ, Father. I pray that you open his heart, open his eyes, that you give him a, uh, take his heart of stone and give him a heart of flesh, Father. I pray that you bless the ground that he walks on, Father, and cover him in the blood of Jesus, Father. I pray that I'm always able to pray for him, Father, like I've always prayed, Father. I pray peace upon him, Father. In Jesus' name, I plead the blood. Amen. All right, people. We prayed it out. 27 minutes and 20 seconds. You guys have a magnificent rest of the day.